Hey guys and welcome back. So in the last video, we successfully set up our server and client so that you can see that we can do something like this where we move a square on one of our clients and it's moving around on the other. Um, now, I would prove this by bringing my laptop up and downloading the code on there and like, but right now I don't have my laptop on me, otherwise I would do that for you guys. But essentially this does work anywhere on your network. Feel free to try this out if you have another computer. Uh, download all of the code, like all of the client code that you need onto that computer, run an instance on there, then run an instance on another computer and you'll see that it actually does indeed work, okay? It doesn't have to be on the same machine. Now, uh, there's quite a few issues that we may run into when we're doing this. So I've set this up essentially to be kind of like an example program or like an example problem um, to give you guys an idea of the way we go about doing things in terms of server and network, but it's really not ideal the way that we've coded things so far. Now I did plan this for uh, to do what we're about to do, but essentially I'm gonna redo um, what we've just done in a much more elegant and nicer way that's going to allow for a better scalability of this uh, program, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna redo it here. I'm gonna show you how we can actually send physical, oh, not physical, but like send objects uh, to the server and from the server back to the client rather than just string data. And then in the next videos, we're actually going to scrap all this code that we've written and we're going to start from fresh and code uh, like a networking game. It's going to be a lot more complex than just a few squares moving around the screen. So that's my plan for this series. Let me know what you guys think of that. I know it might be a little bit frustrating to get rid of this code, but now that we understand how a lot of this works, uh, it's going to be really fast to rewrite it in a much more elegant way. So uh, what I need to first start by doing it's just taking this player class, okay? And I'm just gonna copy it into its own file. So really straightforward, I'm just gonna go to new Python file. I'm gonna call this player with a lowercase and then just copy that player class in there and just import Pygame up here, okay? Import Pygame. Now I'm just gonna go back into client. We can delete this player class now. And what I'm gonna do really basically is just from player import player like that, okay? And that's the first step. Now, remember I said we were gonna send objects. So that actually means that we're not gonna need this read pause and make pause thing. And it's kind of annoying how we've had to, well, take that tuple object, decompose it, turn it into integers, and then change object properties. And then when we wanna send something, we gotta put it into a string and we gotta send it. And it's just a pain. And we don't wanna to have to do that, especially when we're sending tons of different bits of information, not just that same positional data, right? So we're gonna actually gonna delete this and we can delete this client number. I don't know why I have that there. Um, and we're gonna start just making some modifications in terms of sending data and receiving data. So we'll start on the client side and then we'll go over the network, uh, the server side and fix some of that. So wherever we see like read pause and make pause, we can just get rid of that for right now. Um, we don't actually need any of that. We're not gonna need this p2.x stuff. Uh, we don't need p2.update. We'll, we'll get rid of all this for right now. And you know, what? actually let's get rid of start position. Let's get rid of P and let's get rid of P2 and we're gonna recode all this, okay? So actually um, P2, P, yeah, that can stay there. P.move is fine. Okay, so we got rid of all that and you can see we've just cleaned up this file a bit and we'll start working with some more stuff in a second. Now what I wanna do actually is go to this network file that we have um, and we're gonna start making some modifications in here as well. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be sending objects. So that means we're going to send like an instance of the player class. Uh, and that's actually what we're going to be sending instance of a player class to our server, as opposed to sending like string data and then updating the object on, or then updating the string data on the server and then sending it back and then updating the object. That's just a lot of work. It's a lot easier just to send the actual object. So we can do that using something called pickle. Okay. Now it's a weird module name, but it comes default with Python. And this allows us to do something that's called serialize objects. And that just means we turn it into byte information, which is like all the zeros and ones, send it over the, uh, what do you call it? Send it over the network. And then we can decompose that, turn it back into an object and use that. And it's really easy to do that. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna modify a few things in our uh, network class. So first thing, instead of having self.pause, we're gonna say self um, P okay. It's going to be equal to self dot connect. And so saying get, um, position, we'll just do get P and then we'll return self dot P. Okay. And that's all we need to modify for that. But now in the connect in the send, we're going to change a few things as well. So since we're going to be getting object data, 
what we have to do in the connect is we have to decompose that object data. So to do that, you do pickle dot loads. Okay. Now what this stands for is it stands for load byte data. Okay. And we'll, we'll talk more about this as we keep going through, but that's essentially what it means. And same thing here in send, instead of encoding this data, what we're going to do, and I guess decoding as well, is we're going to um, dump it into a pickle object and then send it. So to do that, we're going to just say pickle, uh, is that how you spell pickle? Yeah, dot, dot dumps like that. And we'll just put data in there. Okay. And then when we receive, we'll do the same thing as before. We'll say pickle dot loads, and then we'll load that in. So now essentially what we're doing is we're going to be receiving an object, decomposing that object, getting the actual object, not the bytes um, form of it. And then when we're sending it, we're going to first, like, what do you call it? Encrypt it, like send it into that byte information. And then on the server side, we'll decompose that as well. Okay. So we'll, we'll go through that, but that's all we need for the network side. So now let's go to server and start making some modifications. So same thing here. We no longer need this read pause and make pause functions. We're not going to be using those. Um, and we don't need this pause list either. We're going to change this actually to be players and it's going to be equal to two new players. So notice that we're going to actually store the player object on the server as opposed to on the client side. And this is not only like safer because it means that the player technically can't really mess with the player objects. They can only like do commands to update them. Um, but it's also just like, it's going to be a lot easier and you guys will see how it works. So we're going to say player and we'll do another instance of player. And in here, what we're going to do is we're just going to create two new players. So we're going to say zero, zero, 50, 50, and we'll give it a color. In this case, the first color will be red. So we'll say red, green, blue, like that. And for the other player, we'll start him at a hundred, a hundred, like before we'll do 50, 50, and then we'll make his color uh, blue. Why not? So we'll do that. Okay. So now you notice that we're getting a little error for player here, just because we forgot to import it. So just say from player import player like that. Uh, and that's why I made this a new file, by the way, just so that we'd be able to see it from the server side and the client side as well. And then wherever we're doing this, like send um, encoding stuff, we're going to change this. So let's do that now, actually. So instead of con dot send, instead of encoding some string information, we're just going to send the player object. So what we'll do is we'll say, players like this and then player right so exact same kind of concept as before in that we're going to send the initial like starting position of the player uh, or like the but in this case we're just sending the initial player object which means any information that's stored in that player will be given to the client as opposed to just the position okay um so next what we'll do is instead of saying data equals read pause and decoding we're going to get rid of this dot decode and we're going to put pickle dot loads. Okay. And actually when I'm sending this player object, my bad here, guys, we got to do pickle dot dumps. Okay. And then we're just gonna have to import pickle up here. So import pickle. All right, sweet. Okay. So pickle dot loads, pickle dot dumps. And then it's obviously instead of pause player equals data, we're going to say player players player equals data. And again, same concept as before, what's going to happen is the, what do you call it? The client is going to send us a player object. We're going to replace the existing player object with that new player object. And then we're going to send back the other player objects, like the other client. Okay. So now what we're going to do is just change these pause to be player or players like that. Okay. Same thing here, players. And then when we send it back, what we'll do is we will just turn it into a uh, object, right? So we'll just do that pickle dot dumps and send it back. So say pickle dot dumps reply like that. And that should actually be about it. So let's go back. Oh, sorry. There's something we need to do in client. Um, so now what we're going to do is essentially we've set up our network class so that we're going to be able to send that object data we've set up the server. So we're going to be able to receive that um, object data. We're going to modify the objects we're storing in the list here. And then we're going to send back the other ones to so the other client. So in clients, all we have to do now is set up player one and player two, and then send that data. So really straightforward. It's very similar to before. What we're going to do, first of all, I'm just going to say P one, or actually just P, I guess is equal to n.getp. Okay. 
because in the network uh, class, remember what we're doing is when we initially connect, so let's go back to server, we're just gonna send the initial player object, which is gonna be whatever player it is, so zero or one. So let's just say that this client's player object uh, is gonna be n.getp, okay? And then we'll say, actually, I think that's all we have to do for, yeah, that is all we have to do for that. Inside this while loop now, what we're gonna do is every frame, we're gonna send this player object, which we'll be updating with p.move, and we'll just get the reply and say that that's p2. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say p2 equals, and then in this case, we'll just say p dot, or not p, n dot send p. And that's all we have to do. And notice here that we don't have to do with all this like make, uh, what do you call it? Make pause, read pause, all that stuff. And I believe this should be working if I didn't make any mistakes. So let's cross the fingers and let's try this out. Uh, waiting for connection. Let's go to client one, run that. Okay. And client two, running that. And now notice that these rectangles are the same color. And watch what happens. If I move this red one, see how it's red on the other screen as well. Now that already shows us one of the advantages of doing it this way is that we can store information like color as well, not just position. And if we wanted to store, maybe like there was a text attribute on each of these players, we could store that as well. If we wanted to store more information in the player, like a health or something like that, it'd be a lot easier to do that by just sending the actual player object that has like an unlimited amount of attributes rather than just sending that little tuple that has like five, six, right? Which is the position. So the reason I went through the trouble of showing you the other way is to show you the massive advantage of doing it this way. And just to give you kind of perspective, if you're making something really simple and you don't use any objects, that's how you can do it with string data. But I think this way is a lot easier and we've just cleaned up quite a bit of code. We've gotten rid of a bunch of functions and moving forward, this is gonna make things a lot easier for us. So with that being said, this is going to be it for with this video. The next videos, I'm going to scrap most of what we've done and we're going to start working on a legitimate project. It's going to show you much more in depth how we can do a legitimate game, how we can store um, a lot better things on the server. Because right now all we're storing is two players, but realistically, we probably want to store a ton of information and make like a really cool game. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next.